Hey Mildred, mic check one two three, mic check three two one, mic check one two three, mic check three two one. Okay. WLBT, three on your side. WLBT News starts now. A massive wildfire breaks out in Clinton overnight. I'm Ashley Garner and I'll have all the details coming up in a live report. And today we'll learn if a former Greenville teacher will keep her license after she was caught on camera dragging a student by the hair. And right now I am tracking a shower in Louisiana that may try to cross over the Mississippi River. I am expecting dry and dangerous fire weather to continue today. The full forecast straight ahead on WLBT News this morning. Good morning, I'm Wilson Stribler. And I'm Joy Redmond. At this hour, we're digging to learn more details about an overnight wildfire on the Natchez Trace in Clinton. Ashley Garner joins us live now with the latest on what happened there. Ashley. Wilson and Joy, I'm here at the Clinton Fire Department and firefighters here were very busy last night as they battled that wildfire. Now right now that wildfire is under control. It started sometime around midnight along the Natchez Trace Parkway near Interstate 20. Now in this video, I want you to take a look. You can see the flames burning a huge area of the land there. Now right now it's unclear how it started, but we did see Clinton police there detain one person. Now this fire is one of of many that local firefighters have battled recently due to very dry conditions. Now with little to no rain, several Mississippi counties remain under a burn ban this morning. Residents are urged to be careful during these very serious dry conditions. Now violators will not only be fined, but could be held responsible for any damage. Again, we're working to learn more details about this most recent wildfire here in Clinton. And of course, we'll keep you updated on air as well as online at msnewsnow.com. Reporting live in Clinton, Ashley Garner, three on your side. All right, Ashley, thank you. Well, shortly before that fire, multiple fire crews responded to two brush fires in Rangan County. Captain Donnie Nash with the Shell Road Volunteer Fire Department says units from four departments were on the scene. They used five brush trucks, three tankers, and about 30 volunteer firefighters worked to put out the flames. At last check, the fires were contained, but still not under control. And burn bans remain in effect for 76 out of 82 counties in our state. This is due to a lack of rain and an increase of grass fires. The, burn in, the ban in Hines County will be in effect until December 7th. And that, of course, depends on what the weather does. In the day ahead, state leaders will decide if a Greenville special education teacher will keep her license after this video of her dragging a child went viral. School board members voted to fire Linda Winters Johnson in September after investigators say she grabbed, dragged, and hit a special education student during gym class. The Washington County District Attorney says he does plan to file charges against Winters Johnson, but has not decided what they will be. One person is behind bars in connection with the shooting at a Jackson gas station. It happened at the express lane at the corner of Medgar Evers Boulevard and Ridgeway Street. There's no word on any injuries there. Stay with WLBT and msnewsnow.com for the latest developments in this story. Ryan Davis remains in jail on a $300,000 bond. He's the 22 year old accused of firing into a crowd and injuring six people during a JSU homecoming celebration on October 28th. Davis faces six counts of aggravated assault. Right now, police are searching for the man accused in a deadly shooting in Jackson. Take a close look at your screen. Police said 21 year old Marcellus Townsend used an assault rifle to kill Kristen Bennett on Gaddis Street near Fondren. 19 year old Wymonia Bell was hurt. This shooting brings Jackson's homicide rate to 55 this year. And according to 24 seven Wall Street, the city has the sixth highest murder rate per capita. The study shows there are 31 murders for every 100,000 people in Jackson. That's more than half of Jackson's current population. Last year, there were 58 homicides. The city has enlisted federal help through the Violence Reduction Network. 
Happening now in Warren County, the search continues for a missing Vicksburg woman. According to WVBG, 20-year-old Larylis Ross works in the Quarters Barge Galley with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Matt Sinking Unit. Ross was last seen around 2.30 Tuesday afternoon. She was reported missing Wednesday morning. The U.S. Coast Guard and St. Charles Parish Sheriff's Department are assisting the Corps Vicksburg District with the search. Well, if you're just joining us, we do have new information in the burning and vandalism of Hopewell Baptist Church in Greenville. Cheryl Lasseter is taking a closer look for us in the alert center. Cheryl? Well, Wilson, we have learned this morning through WABG that traces of a flammable material were found inside the church and have been sent to the crime lab in Jackson now for analysis. The Greenville Fire Chief says they hope to have those results back no later than Monday. This new development could help investigators find who did it, but officers have been interviewing a person of interest about the Tuesday night burning of that historically black church, which was also spray painted with the words vote Trump. That's the latest from the Alert Center. All right, Cheryl, you will not find the Mississippi flag flying at any of the state's eight public universities. This week, Delta State became the last one to take it down. It's no longer flying on the campus because it features the Confederate battle emblem. DSU had been flying the state flag alongside the American and university flags. Last year, the university called on Mississippi to change its flag, saying the state needs a flag that symbolizes unity and not divisiveness. Looking ahead, our nation's capital is getting ready for its Christmas tree. The 80-foot-tall Engelman spruce was cut down in McCall, Idaho. Officials say the tree was chosen among four finalists. The capital tree will eventually be decorated with more than 18,000 handmade ornaments. And then, on December 6th, the grand finale as an Idaho resident flips the switch to light it up for the whole country to see. 607 is your time, about 61 degrees in the capital city. We have traffic and weather together for you. Take a live look here. This is I-55 at the Waterworks Curve, and everything is moving along nicely there. This is the case all across the Jackson Metro. JPD telling us that they're not working any accidents this morning, and that is some good news. Uh, no fog to slow you down and no rain to slow you down. That's not so much good news, Heather. We need that rain, but you're tracking what's going on for us right now. Yeah, <laughs> right now we are dry, and as we head into the next few hours, temperatures go from 61 to the upper 60s by 9 a.m. Lots of sunshine in store for Forest, but winds will be an issue this afternoon, and that's because we're continuing to deal with dangerous fire weather. I'm breaking down all the details you need to know, especially as we head into the weekend. Right after this, you're watching WLVT News. Time now, 606 and 61 degrees.
This is WLBT First Alert Weather. Welcome back everyone to WLBT News this morning. First alert meteorologist Heather Sophia tracking dry weather and no fog this morning. This time yesterday we were seeing that fog really settle in. Not the case this morning. We're looking live with our Alpha Insurance Skycam at Rainbow in Macomb and we'll stay dry this morning. We need the rain. Not going to happen for this morning. You can see that with our live first alert Doppler radar. I was trying to see if we could get that little shower that is passing through I-20 over between let's say here or Vicksburg and Monroe and that shower is quickly weakening. Now, as we head through the day, the winds right now are calm, but they're going to pick up as we head later into the day at about 8 to 10 miles per hour at noon. This afternoon is going to be an issue as we are going to see those winds up to 10 to 15 miles per hour. And with all this dangerous fire weather, this literally add fuel, adds fuel to the fire because we're also going to have to deal with low humidity. And with the lack of rainfall, we are going to deal with an elevated fire weather threat for any areas pretty much along and north of I-20 and a limited threat any anywhere along and south of I-20. In the meantime, as you head out the door, temperatures are at 57 degrees in Vicksburg, 64 in Carthage. As we zoom into, let's say, Rankin County, Brandon at 61, 62 in Edwards, 62 in Utica. As the kiddos get on the bus this morning, it's going to be dry, warming up this afternoon to 80 degrees, 50 degrees as we head back to school on Monday uh, in the morning and then temperatures in the upper 70s. Our first alert forecast model, as that front moves through, we are going to see a few clouds out there. I'm not expecting to see the rain because the, the air is going to be so dry as it moves on through, but those winds will be kicking and screaming. And again, that is certainly going to add to our uh, dangerous fire weather. And you could see all counties right now that are in the red. Take a quick look at your TV. If your county is in red, we're under a burn ban. And as we look ahead, we're going to continue to see those drought conditions get worse. Rain chances return on Election Day. And in fact, as we go to bed on Monday night, we'll see a slight chance of rain as we wake up on Tuesday. Could see potentially lots of moisture around kicking in some showers and thunderstorms for much of the day, primarily in South Mississippi, along and south of the I-20 corridor, which would be great news, but not going to see that this weekend. This weekend is going to be nice. Temperatures will be in the upper 40s. Afternoon highs will be in the upper 70s and that seven day forecast keeps us dry all the way through Monday. Now, quick stop at the weekend. We do get an extra hour of sleep on Sunday. Typically it happens at 2 a.m. Uh, daylight saving time ends and then as we head into next week, beginning on Tuesday, we have a slight chance of rain and it sticks around through next Thursday. Here's a look now at your first alert traffic and weather together. Jackson police tell us it's all clear out on the highways this morning. Here's a case in point I-55 at the stack. Traffic's coming up from the stack with no problem as it heads toward downtown Jackson. We'll keep an eye on things. If there are any changes, of course, uh, we'll pass them along to you. We do have this traffic alert we need to let you know about. MDOT plans to close some lanes this weekend on I-55 between I-20 and Byram. On Saturday and Sunday, one northbound lane between Elton and McDowell Roads will be closed from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. so crews can install some overhead sign trusses. Also, the southbound on-ramp from Elton Road will be shut down beginning Saturday so it can be reconstructed. Fears of what could happen on Election Day and what's happening before Election Day are mounting as we enter the last leg of the presidential campaign. Tracy Potts has the latest on how the U.S. government is preparing and who the candidates are targeting in these final few days. Intelligence sources tell NBC your vote is safe, but they're preparing for possible hacks affecting electricity, the internet, social media, and transportation next Tuesday. For now, the concern is African American voters in swing states. They couldn't find you in the rolls at all. And you had just voted. And just voted <laughs> in the primary. Donald Trump and extremists supporting him have called for monitors at the polls. Hillary Clinton calls that intimidation. The best way to repudiate the bigotry and the bluster and the bullying and the hateful rhetoric and discrimination is to show up with the biggest turnout in American history. Our latest polls show Trump ahead in Arizona and Texas, but a statistical tie in Georgia. Team Clinton thinks North Carolina is a firewall that Trump needs to win. President Obama campaigns there today. Trump's wife Melania campaigned solo for the first time. We have to find a better way to talk to each other, to disagree with each other. 
to respect each other. The FBI continues to examine 650,000 emails linked to Clinton's top aide. How can there be duplicates when 650,000 is even more than all of them that are missing, right? Still no word on when the FBI will complete its review. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. Soccer season is ending early for Harvard men's team following a serious investigation. We've got details on this story and more coming up on WLBT. First alert, meteorologist Heather Sophia tracking yet another dry start to the day. Despite a front moving through, we are going to see dry weather and windy weather, and that's going to add fuel to the dangerous fire weather we're expecting today. Highs will top out near 80 degrees, and as we head into the weekend, refreshing fall air moves in, and we also get an extra hour of sleep. Daylight saving time ends. Afternoon highs in the upper 70, morning lows in the 40s. Rain chances return on Election Day, and stick around next Wednesday and Thursday. First alert, meteorologist Heather Sophia with your hour by hour forecast. This morning, temperatures in the 60s rising into the 70s by the lunch hour, and we're expecting to see those temperatures topping out at 80, still well where, above where we should be for this time of the year. And looking ahead to the weekend, refreshing cool air moves in, afternoon highs in the upper 70s, morning temperatures starting in the upper 40s, which will be quite nice. Daylight saving time ends on Sunday, an extra hour of sleep. Rain returns on Election Day and stays around next Wednesday and Thursday. Welcome back everyone to WLVT News. It is 617, 61 degrees. As the sun comes up at 720, the temperatures will go up as well. We're talking upper 60s by 9 a.m., mid 70s by the lunch hour. If you are going to grab lunch with your friends today at work, ask for the patio seat. It's going to be nice. A little on the windy side, but hey, we'll take the wind. It's just going to feel good out there. 80 degrees by mid-afternoon and Friday night football. We are in for a treat. No rain out there. Temperatures are going to be comfy. Another check on your forecast coming up in minutes. New this morning, we're getting our first look at the letter a state representative sent demanding an investigation into a congressman's military service. This is a copy of the letter Democratic Representative David Barry has sent to the Mississippi National Guard. Barry demands the Guard launch an investigation into complaints that Republican U.S. Congressman Stephen Palazzo was AWOL from drills for about two years. The Palazzo campaign has not yet responded to the letter, but when the allegations first surfaced last week, Palazzo said the accusations are false. Guard officials indicated he has been serving duty. The men's soccer team at Harvard University has been suspended. The players accused of continuing a tradition of creating sexually explicit scouting reports on freshman women soccer players. Harvard has been investigating the team since an article in the school's paper detailed the practice. The athletic director says players participating in the lewd posts were also not immediately forthcoming with the truth. Varsity athletes at the university say they can see how this was a difficult but necessary move. Especially as an athlete, there's nothing uh, you hate more than having your season over, whether it's for losing or, uh, you know, for a detriment of character. And I think uh, hopefully it'll be lesson learned. In a statement, Harvard's president said in part the decision to cancel a season is serious and consequential and reflects Harvard's view that both the team's behavior and the failure to be forthcoming when initially questioned are completely unacceptable. 
The U.S. Department of Education has slapped a $2.4 million fine on Penn State University in the wake of the Jerry Sandusky case. The agency accuses Penn State of violating the Cleary Act, which requires universities to report crimes that happen on campus. Penn State is accused of failing to report allegations about Sandusky's behavior. The former football defensive coordinator was found guilty in 2012 of sexually abusing 10 boys. He's currently appealing that conviction. Listen to this. A man in California opened his front door to find 83 unused ballots on his doorstep, all addressed to different people. He sounded the alarm, as Cheryl Lasseter tells us in the Alert Center. Cheryl, this is bizarre. Yes, Jerry Mosna says right away he knew something wasn't right, so he called about it. The Los Angeles County Registrar's Office says a glitch in the system caused that mix up, and all of those ballots found on that man's doorstep have now been voided. The affected voters have been contacted. Voting officials say they believe it's an isolated incident and they're watching for any other voting irregularities. That's the latest from the Alert Center. All right, Cheryl, thank you. It is 620. And we check back in with First Alert meteorologist Heather Sophia now. Yeah, it's Friday, and if you are heading out the door and maybe you're heading somewhere across the southeast, here's your travel forecast for you. Temperatures today in the Magnolia State in the 80s. The farther west you go, the higher the rain chance as you head into Louisiana and parts of Texas. Otherwise, if you're staying around the southeast for some football action, you're going to be nice, dry, and much cooler. And then Tuesday is Election Day, and that is going to be the first chance. I do expect to see a decent chan a chance of rain, especially after the lunch hour. Temperatures will be in the upper 70s on Tuesday. I'll have another check on your forecast when we come back right after the commercial break. And as always, we've got your traffic and weather together. Yeah, take a live look outside in Ridgeland, I-55 at Old Agency Road there, the Cloverleaf Hi. turnaround uh, at Old Agency, and you can see traffic's moving along fine there with no problem. We've got no reports of any traffic types anywhere in the metro area so far on this Friday morning. We hope it stays that way, but if it doesn't, we'll be the first to let you know. Next on 3. That's the first time it's ever been like, truly safe. A woman suffering a serious heart attack in Oklahoma, thanking that police officer. We've got more on his rescue that was caught on camera after the break. First alert, meteorologist Heather Sophia. We continue to see drought conditions get worse. In fact, anybody in the red, that's where we're dealing with an extreme drought. And we are going to add fuel to the fire this afternoon. If we have any fires that do start off, it is going to be get dangerous very quickly. And that's because we are going to see wind gusts as high as 15 to 20 miles per hour, meaning if a fire starts, it will take off fast. So be sure to be careful if you're under a burn ban. Don't burn anything. The weekend, though, looking nice. Afternoon highs in the upper 70s, morning lows in the 40s. First alert, meteorologist Heather Sophie with your hour by hour forecast temperatures by the lunch hour in the mid 70s. Take the lunch outside. It's going to be nice afternoon highs topping out near 80. 72 is where we should be for a high, so we're still running above average and I don't expect to see a really a break from the warm weather over the weekend. It will be cooler. Don't get me wrong, but we could use some much cooler weather. It is November after all morning temperatures on Saturday and Sunday in the 40s. Daylight saving time ends on Sunday. That means we get an extra hour of sleep. Rain returns on Tuesday.
Welcome back everyone to WLBT News. First alert meteorologist Heather Sophia and we continue to see a dry start to the day temperatures. Right now we're sitting at 61 degrees and we'll see those temperatures be up into the 80s this afternoon and we can see that hour by hour forecast in the meantime 67 by 9 a.m. 11 a.m. temperatures at 74. We are going to deal with a windy day. We're going to see those winds gusting as high as 10 to 15 miles per hour. It's even more vital that you very well um, um, obey all the burn bans in place. It's unknown when full power will be restored at the Paris Las Vegas Hotel Casino on the Vegas Strip. Officials say the power went out Thursday morning when a contractor working in the basement cut into the main power line. They say the cut also prevented the backup generators from turning on. No injuries were reported, but fire crews had to rescue 11 people who were trapped on five different elevators. When I go 30, I want you to get a two breaths, okay? <laughs> A woman who was having a heart attack in Oklahoma was saved by a police officer and the roadside rescue was caught on camera. That's what you're looking at. The woman's husband and daughter were rushing her to the hospital and since they were speeding, that caught the attention of an officer who pulled them over. After learning what was going on, Officer Jordan Jones immediately called first responders, then hurried to the truck and found Tina Liddy unresponsive and not breathing. They pulled her from the truck and quickly started CPR until she started breathing again. Paramedics arrived and rushed her to the hospital. It was a blessing from the Lord, right place, right time, and just knowing how to respond. Doctors told the family Liddy's heart attack was so severe, only about 10% of people survived it, and thankfully, she certainly did. All right, so getting a song stuck in your head can be absolutely maddening, right? A new study explores why some songs referred to as earworms tend to stick in our brains more than others. Researchers in the UK asked thousands of people to name their most frustrating earworms, then compared them to other songs playing on the radio. Earworms tended to be faster with a fairly generic melody, but with unique repetitions. Think Lady Gaga's Bad Romance or Maroon 5's Moves Like Jagger. <laughs> yeah, experts say giving in and listening to the entire song can help stop it from looping in your brain. But calling it a worm is kind of gross. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. Well, a lot of Chicago Cubs fans may have skipped work so they could see and celebrate the big World Series win, but they shouldn't worry. The Cubs have them covered. The team tweeted super official looking excuse notes. <laughs> They're for all their fans, <laughs> and they can use them to get excused from work, class, and pretty much all their real responsibilities. Uh, hopefully fans got a chuckle at the mock letter instead of taking it too seriously because it might not actually get you out of trouble for skipping work for the big game or the celebrations. I imagine there's a lot more of that in Chicago than anywhere <laughs> else. But if your boss is a Cubs fan, he, he or probably she would was, probably understand. Yeah, I'm sure he would. Probably was like, I don't blame you. I'm mm -hmm. off today too. Yeah, but we're here, Heather. Yeah, it reminds <laughs> me much of when the Saints won the Super Bowl. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, very similar situation. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. a lot of people lot called of in sick. And today, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm not going to even look at you. Today might be the day. As we look ahead to the weekend afternoon, highs will be in the upper 70s, still running well above where we should be for this time of the year. Rain chances return on Tuesday. More WLBT News and Weather when we come back.